Uh, we, we are going to flip through our book here and um, see we've got at Explorer Station 2, that's team number 15. Uh, this is the Beluga ROV uh, from Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, uh, the uh, XOPE. And yesterday uh, they scored... 220 points. Okay, that's what I thought. That was one of those high schools. Man, the highest of the that may be the highest, I think, that was scored yesterday by an Explorer team. That was, yeah. So we'll have to see how so, they did today. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll have to watch their vehicle in action. I think you can see it in the top of the frame right now. There it is. Um, that is the Beluga ROV from the team from Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Shout out to uh, anybody in Hong Kong <laughs> watching the team. See what time um, it is out there. <laughs> I know that uh, it's uh, about 1 a.m. in the morning <laughs> in Hong Kong, so if you're up watching, uh, congratulations uh, <laughs> for making it to the point where you get to see the Beluga ROV run. Oh, that's um, a really stable with, uh, ROV. Expo C. Yeah, so I think another. this is another case in which they laid out the vehicle very, very well for good stability. It looks like their tethers coming in and attaching right to the top of the vehicle. So it's got a float. I see there's a single float on the tether right at the surface. So it looks like they basically tuned that float so that it's holding the tether vertically in the water column to keep it uh, out from uh, the, the rest of the, rest of the uh, vehicle. So you can see it's doing some spins up at the top there, backing up toward the, the wall of the pool. Um, they may be preparing to uh, descend uh, and do yeah, they... another task uh, before, bring, before bringing it out and changing out tools. This is a very compact looking vehicle, but it's got some special tools on the front, it looks like, that were developed. Um, it says, uh, it says they have a uh, rasp, oh, um, auto depth and heading stabilization. Wow. Well, maybe that's one of the reasons why it looks so good under underwater or under control. The, it's a fairly um, lightweight, small system, 11 kilograms, and it fits uh, within, I believe, our 54 centimeter. They're actually running a full Ross, so they've integrated Ross, which is one of those open, um, open source uh -huh. so that's going to help with those IMUs and that stabilization so they're going to leverage that open source community uh, size frame it's got an inertial measurement unit on it pressure by, by, by using, by this using architecture. That, that that software architecture so let's see how many that's ROV uh, or part open source robotics uh, architectures out there that's right a raw stands for hours they spent on this it's a pretty um, sophisticated uh, uh, way yeah for robotics uh, operating system, operating system. yeah right. so um, that's very that, common so that actually makes it really easy to integrate other sensors that are Ross comp compliant it's for over 75 hours so wow. far so uh, as of the time of making this spec sheet so 2,000 hours which is kind of standard we've seen for some of the other ones so yep. by doing these open source architectures you're able to get a lot more technology at a lot less time so yep. say they've flown so probably more by now <laughs> and uh, again uh, you know pilot time is really important I believe the vehicle is now a uh, um, checking uh, cargo containers for which one is the most hazardous. They just got really close to one of them and they're coming over near the other ones that are very close to the camera. So we're getting a nice close-up view of that vehicle now. That is a pretty vehicle. Look at that. Yeah. That looks uh, professional to me. <laughs> oh yeah. Very, very professional. Um, vertical thrusters are on the outside there. Two of them on either side centered on the, on the frame of the vehicle. Four, it looks like it's got the uh, vectored horizontal thrusters of four kind of in the in the corners of the frame. Uh, I believe they just grabbed something. I don't remember seeing the red. Oh, no, that's before. their marker buoy. I can ah, see the extra marker look top buoy. Side. Okay, so they, they are waiting to identify which of the cargo containers is the most hazardous, and that will be their marker on the most hazardous container. So they're... Uh, Did they just drop it? No, I don't think they've dropped it yet. I think uh. they were just getting close to that fourth and final container to identify which one. I think perhaps they've now identified that cargo container 
as the one that needs the marker buoy? We'll see. Um, or they're going to check it again. This is one of these uh, uh, situations where the, the ROV itself has to move around the uh, underwater environment, physically move from place to place um, in, in good control. Exactly. If we actually have the picture in picture for the top side view, we could see we got two, the tether going. To, oh, there goes the, the marker right there. Did, oh, they marked that one right there. Yep. And, and is, it, is that it? I, I see it on the surface. I don't see it on the surface yet. I see their yeah. tether, their tether buoys on the surface there. Correct. Let's see. So yep. look at the Hong Kong RV. They actually just flew into the um, fountain. The, the, the fountainhead. Thank you. The, the fountain. fountain entertainment uh, frame. And we can see them turning off the water right now. So. Yep, they're right there on the corner where that valve is. Yep. Uh, looks like they've already unplugged it. They're down there right where the plug is. Do you think maybe they're at the point of plugging it back in already? Wow, they've already exchanged the head? It's possible. Um, it's hard to tell sometimes because these tasks, <laughs> the vehicle has to go to the same place twice, but doing opposite things each time it's there. Right. In the case of the first time it goes down to the plug where the vehicle is now, that is unplugging it, and the second time it visits that area is plugging it back in. It looks like he's plugging it so in. So <laughs> it may be that they have completed replacing the fountainhead, and they are plugging wow. the uh, electricity back into the entertainment platform. So that would be a completion uh, of, uh, I believe that's task number two, the entertainment uh, task. The vehicle is now coming back over toward our, our camera, uh, and it may be going on to our... Uh, health and environment task. Oh, no. Uh, it looks like it's grabbing the head. Oh, oh. oh no, agar. Oh, There's yes. Agar okay, right we're going to go. Well, that is part of that health and environment. So we have some contaminated sediment that is being simulated by a cup full of agar. And earlier today, we've interviewed uh, two teams that had um, different approaches to that whole philosophy. But, <laughs> but before they actually sample the agar, they have to determine which cup has the uh, sediment that they want to sample. Correct. So uh, again, this is one in which they shine a light at each uh, sediment area, uh, simulating Raman spectroscopy of <laughs> that. And then they look at, based on what they find there, they look at, um, and then they determine based on those spectrographs, uh, which cup they need. Like they've decided that's the one to sample. They've just sat down on that one and uh, at sheets the judges hand them that have spec spectrographs. RV from Hong Kong. Yep, watching it, it looks like to sample from. And then they can approach that with, with their uh, sampling device. And we just switched over to the open ROV feed of the same... Uh, uh, if they did indeed sample it, they may transport that sample back to the surface immediately, or they could just keep it on board the ROV. Correct. It's, it was a um, team we just interviewed had an interesting approach where they actually were uh, manually sucking it That's while right. the ROV was while off doing While the ROV was doing other things. Yep. So um, oh, my guess a... is that the way this team is doing it is the sampler is actually right on the ROV itself. Yeah. So it appears that the... Uh, the vehicle is driving back to the surface. So we should um, see it top side pretty soon. Coming over here, or it could be over there helping out with the Hyperloop construction task. I see the, the simulated crane operator on the pool deck holding yep. the, uh, the crane line from the, from the Hyperloop. You can see the simulated crane operator there on the right. Uh, holding a red line going into the water. That red line is uh, holding up that large rectangular frame. Um, there goes the vehicle back in the water. I believe they just recovered their agar sample for measurement. Oh, don't fall in the water. Yeah, lose points for that. That's right. 
Uh, a team member going in the water, I think, counts as debris. Yeah. <laughs> I think they get the debris penalty if they fall in the water. And so what uh, they're going down now, is that the cap for the... Uh... I believe that's correct. Uh, the cap for the contaminated sediment area. Now that they've sampled the sediment and maybe they've brought up some clams or were some contaminated clams, they now need to go cap that area with our simulated cap, <laughs> a.k.a. a very large bucket lid. Bucket, yeah, there you go. <laughs> And we mentioned this yesterday, I mean, all these props could be made for very minimal cost from your hardware store. So this is really open competition for That's right. very low entry cost. Very, very low entry cost. If you want to practice with these things, all the instructions about how to make them are published in October every year, yep. uh, along with all the mission tasks. So everybody has access to all the information and the score sheets, so they know how they're going to be a scored Correct. on each of these, uh, both for the product demonstration in the pool as well as their technical reports and their posters and their presentation to the judges. All of that is published early on. So allowing them, allowing them to, to, to <laughs> practice, yeah. So we talked about that vehicle awareness and sometimes it's very hard to know where everything's around you in this pool, especially when there's this much um, structure, we'll say. <laughs> That's right, it's a crowded environment um, and that's not completely atypical in some underwater environments. Uh, oh. But uh, in this particular case, you have um, fellow competitors perhaps very nearby. You've got <coughs> um, other ROVs watching you. You've got 